capítulo Tzadik. We're now in the seventh chapter of the Tikkun Atali, chapter 90. Okay? Tfila le Moshe, Isha Elohim, Adonai Maon Ata Haita Lanu Bedor Vador. Rabbi Nachman says if we go with his pattern in Likutim Moran, where for Tfila he brings a pasuk from Iov, Hayachel Tafel Bibli Melach, in Yesh Berir Chalamot, plus that the Tikkun Zohar and the Zohar Pinchas and Emor connect Tfila with the Sphira of Malchut. So we have a connection between Malchut, the, the, how this pasuk, is, is, this pasuk from Eov is explained, and the significance of this chapter 90 in Tehillim, which basically the whole theme of the chapter is always in the opening verse of the chapter. In this case, Tefillah de Moshe. So let's just recap a little how <coughs> Chazal, how the Midrash and the Zohar explain Hayachel Tafel Mibli Melech, Mibli Melech, so the, one of the friends of Eov are saying to him, is there, and I think it's one of the friends of Eov, not Eov himself, if I remember. Listen, sometimes you forget things. <clears throat> Can you eat bland food without salt? No, you can't, right? Question mark. Can you eat bland food without salt? Question mark. Is there taste in the white part of the egg yolk, I mish tam berir, berir, the liquidy part of the egg. You have the yolk, which is the more solid part of the egg, the yellow part, and the liquidy part, the rir of the chalamut, of the chal, of the of the of the chalamut is the not the chelbon but the chelmon, the the rir, the, the the liquidy part of the egg yolk, which is the white part. Is there taste in it when you eat it raw? There's no taste. You have to cook it. You have to add salt. You need salting. So the Midrash, the Zohar points out, and how it's written in the Pasuk is of a Tav, and the normal way for writing bland food, bland food means that it's secondary. I need another food item to give it taste, so the item, in this case salt, will become primary, because if there's no salt, I'm not going to eat it. If there's, like, like people say, if there's no milk in the coffee, I'm not going to have a coffee. I need, I need the, the main thing is the coffee. I know I the main nutrients and everything, the energy is from the coffee. But if I don't have the milk with it, to give, so because of that, the secondary is really primary. In other words, the melach is the main thing, because that's what gives the taste, right? The coffee, the milk is the main thing in the coffee, because you know, oh, the milk, you're not going to drink the coffee, okay? So tafel is secondary. So the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai points out, it's written with a tav. Since when do you write tafel with a tav? It's with a tet. So he says, and it's brought, it's since now, in the laws of Dikduk, in Chazal, in the, in the Torah also, they write tafel with a tav, so we have an opening to connect prayer to the concept of tafel, okay? Tafel meaning a secondary food. There's also a prayer, which is secondary, God forbid. What is a prayer that's secondary? is that when the person can't concentrate on the davening, he's not into the davening, so the, 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 the Midrash and the Zohar compare davening with kavana to a rider on the horse. We went into this once, if you remember, that the Zohar says, Sus is Gematria 126. You get to 126 by expanding the holy name of Hashem, which is associated with prayer and malchut, which is Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud, and you expand it like this, Aleph, Aleph, Dalet, Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud, adds up to 126. So the idea of a horse is the idea of the words of prayer, Adonai, Sfatai, Tiftach, Ufiagiti, Latecha, the words of prayer are Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud, okay? Sus is an expansion of that, that's the idea of Aleph, Beribua, expanding the prayer, developing the prayer, and there's the one riding on the prayer. Riding on the prayer is that the person is concentrating on the davening. The, per, the Midrash says this, if the person is concentrating on the davening, it's like, a, it's like a, 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 ride, a rider having control over the, over the horse. He's riding on the horse, so he's in charge of the horse. But if a person can't concentrate in his davening, so it's like he's schlepping the horse. The horse is on his back, on his shoulders, and he's schlepping, that the daven becomes a burden. Rabbi talks about this in Lesson 30, and also Lesson 1, Part 2, of the Kutimuram that some people have such a burden in davening, they just want to get over with it already. It's such a burden. I can't stand the davening. When a person doesn't daven with tam, with life, 
he'd rather be doing other things. He'd rather be dead, chas Hashem, sometimes. It's so bitter just davening empty words that just get over with it already. Let's just finish it. Yeah? That's unfortunately a very sad mitziut. But that's a mitziut. That's unfortunately what happens. Is that davening, Rabbi Nachman says there, person wants to get over with it as soon as possible because it's a burden. It's a burden. If there's no light in the davening, that becomes just opposite. It's not like neutral. Or it's a light, or it's a burden, but not in between. <laughs> it's a burden, or it's a light. Number one or two. So that's or I'm riding on the horse, or the, the horse is riding on the, on the rider. Okay? That's, so tafel tfila is, is, is when it's, it has to be secondary, in a positive sense. In other words, for a person, it's interpreted as being negative, that the davening is tafel. And he's missing light in his davening, so it's become, has its not primary. So what to do? So the, the Zohar says this, Tfilah is Lemoshe. You have to attach your Tfilah, Lemoshe. You have to connect it to Lemoshe. The Zohar says this, unbelievable. The Zohar itself says this, Tikkun Zohar, page, page Dalet, Amur Aleph, I think, over there. <coughs> Tikkun 44. It says that person has to attach his davening, because Tfilah is only Shaykh Le David. Tfilah is only Shaykh Le Moshe. It's only to the outstanding tzaddikim. That's the davening. It's Shaykh Davka to them. Okay? This is Tfilah. Le Moshe, Tfilah, Le David. Okay? So now, Hayacher Tafel Mibli Melach. How it's interpreted now. Can you eat davening? Can davening be consumed without Melach? Melach being the tzaddik. Right? Rabbi Nachman goes into the idea of the tzaddik connected to salt in Lesson 23 of the Kutim Ram. Ilmale milcha, what the Zohar says, we're not for salt. We're not for the salt. The world cannot stand the bitterness of, of living. And so the salt. Mela, brit melach, brit is covenant. Hashem made a covenant with the salt that, number one, will have a part in the tabernacle, in the mishkan, but also that has a brit that it doesn't go rotten. It doesn't go rotten salt. It stays in, it's, it's preserved very well. It stays preserved. So that and brit also is the word for for sexual purity the kedushat brit. So the, the idea of brit melach is the idea of the tzaddik. So I, so he's, in, in the verse it's reading hayachel tafel mibli melach. Can you eat? Can can davening be consumed without melach? No, it can't. In order to be called tfila, it has to be connected to Moshe. Tfila le Moshe, tfila le David. It has to have the tzaddik in it. So tfila is. Kedushat Tabrit, which means the tzaddikim, tefillah le-Moshe, okay? And then the verse goes on, Haim yesh ta'am berir chalamot, this is scary, this is how the Rav, the Cher and the Rav explains this. Rir chalamot refers to the emission a person has in his dreams. Chalamot is like chalom, a dream. Having a, God forbid, uh, what's a, 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 a mikra, a mikra line that happens when a person is sleeping in the dream. And the rear is also the term, in the Chumash, what talks about the Zav and the Zava, so that's called Rir, Ror, Besaro, and everything. So, so the verse reads like this. Davening, if now there's Dav Tfila without salt, so obviously there will be damage caused from the rear Chalamot, from the rear, the liquid coming out from the due to the bad dream. But now, if you read it like this, you, for sure you can't have davening without melach. To be considered davening, tefillah, it has to have the tzaddik, you have to have kedushat tabrit in it, in order to be called a tefillah. In order for a person to daven, tefillah, he needs melach, in order for davening. So if you have that, can it be? No, it can't be. So therefore, ayesh tam, is there a tam? In other words, is there a svara? Is there a reason to cause damage Rir chalamot from the emission that taking place in the dream. That's how the Chern Rav explains it amazingly. How it fits in the Rasha and the Sefer. Other pun. Hayachel tafel bibli melach. Can you eat davening? Can be davening be consumed and accepted without salt? Of course it can't. It has to be. If you have tefillah, so you have automatically shmirat abrit because it's the melach. Once you have shmirat abrit tafel. So is there now a reason for the damage? There's no more ta'am reason for the damage of the rear that came out from the Khalamot. That's how the Chen Rav explains this pasuk. Amazing, okay? Fine. So this we went into. Now we have to connect it to Malchut, the Sfira Malchut, and the full opening verse now. So if we open up the full verse now of this capital, we get a better view 
of Tefillah de Moshe and how this is connected to Malchut. First, what is Malchut, the sphere of Malchut? Malchut and this and the sphere are set up is the final sphere that gives out the nourishment to this world. Okay? But on a more specific level, why does Hashem allow this to happen? Why is the last sphere of the nourishment to this world called Malchut? Because the ultimate goal of this creation is that Malchut Shamayim be revealed. Hashem's Malchut be revealed. You know why you're going by eating? So that you should finally recognize there's a God in the world. Do you know why you're existing? If you're a nice fancy house in, uh, in, uh, in Maui or I don't know what's it called, all the, the nice West Coast houses, I don't know. You know why you're having it good? So you should recognize Hashem. Do you know why Hashem made this world? So you should recognize Hashem. Everything is to reveal the kingship of Hashem. The whole existence of this world, the final, final goal is that Hashem's malchut be revealed in the world. That's malchut, okay? The trick is that it's a work because the world is associated with the name Elohim, which is gematria teva, nature. There's nature and we have to go above nature. We want to transform the nature to miracles above the nature, and that way to reveal Hashem. That's how Hashem is revealed the greatest way. The greatest way Hashem is revealed is that within the nature, miracles happen, transforming to above nature, and that way Hashem is revealed. With that said, look at the verse. Tfila le Moshe, Isha Elohim. Okay? Adonai ma'onata ha'italanu bedov ador. So there's a few pieces in the Midrash, the best place this is explained, this verse, is in Midrash Tehillim. Midrash Tehillim, which is a book which is unfortunately so untouched, people don't really know about this book, how precious it is. It's basically a continuation of Midrash Rabbah on Tehillim. Midrash Tehillim, written by the, the Tanaim Amoraim, until the time of the Tanaim, okay? It's not a joke. They give 11 interpretations on this verse. On this one pasuk, 11 explanations. Unbelievable. We're going to focus on one which best relates to what we're speaking about here. Okay, he says like this. Thank you. The prayer of Moshe. Who is Moshe? Amazing. They explain like this in one of the in, 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 uh, 11 interpretations in the Midrash. Ish means master, like Ish Naomi. Ish na, the husband, the master. Rashi says there, he was called Adimelech. Adimelech? Abimelech, Elimelech, was called Ish Naomi. Rashi says, why called Ish Naomi? He was the Baal, the master over Naomi, because a woman has a husband over her. So Ish connotes master. Who's Moshe Rabbeinu? He's the master over Elohim. What does the media say? Elohim, Gematra Teva. The Lord, who's the God over nature, Moshe Rabbeinu is the master over nature. In a way, this is what the Chazal teach, that Hashem makes a gzera, and the tzaddikim are, Hashem says, the tzaddikim are greater than me. I make a decree, and the tzaddik comes along and knocks off the decree. That's Isha Elohim. That the tzaddik is a master over Elohim. Elohim is Teva. The Teva, Hashem, as Lord, when he has to take on that attitude because there's a lot of dinim de- de- in the world, there's, not, there's no tshuva, there's no good deeds, so Hashem has no other alternative but to be tough. To, to, to cause that nature rules, nature is in control, the person, God forbid, has, has the deathly cancer, and then according to the course of nature, that person's finished. We can already assume that after, once he's a person's chassid of diagnosed with cancer, he's going to die within a year, it's finished, there's nothing to do, nothing to say, and the doctors and them, themselves, they say, oh, sorry, sorry, you have another five months to live, four months to live, They're, everything is dictated, Elohim, judgment, okay? Moshe Rabbeinu is Ish Elohim, He's the master over Elohim, which is Gematria Teva, nature. He can change the nature. Why can he do that? Because also he's called Ish Elohim. The Midrash says his Ish, his physicality of being a man, was sanctified to godliness. He purified himself that his Ish is also Elohim. He became such a holy person that his Ish is now Elohim also. So that's why he has the power to be Ish Elohim, the master to now overpower nature, Elohim, okay? Now that's not enough. Now we go on. Adonai ma'on ata ha'ita lanu bedor ador. This is now how the Midrash, what comes out of the Midrash explanation. Aleph dalet nun yud, 
And it's written in the Pasuk that way. It's not written Yud Kevavke. It's not written Hashem. It's written in the Pasuk itself, Alef Dalet Nun Yun, which is the name of God corresponding to Malchut, which is prayer. So now, read, watch the verse. Ado, Ma'on, Kama, Atahayit Alanu Bedor Vador. So Alef Dalet Nun Yud, Dash, Ma'on, Ma'on, what's this word Ma'on? Ma'on is like the Midrash says to Makom. Okay? So the Midrash brings in the two explanations. One is very known, that the Hashem is the Makomo Shel Olam, Ve'en Ha'olam Mekomo. You would think, there's the world, and Hashem's place is in the world. No, Hashem is the place, and the world is in Hashem. Right? It's not the opposite. Okay, there's the world, and Hashem could be found also in the world. No way, no way, Jose, no. It's that the, there's Hashem, and the world is in Hashem. Similarly, you have... A horse, the Midrash says this, and went into what we said about the horse and the rider. You have the horse and the rider. Who's the place here? Do we say that the horse is the place, and the rider's riding like a free ride on the horse, and because the horse is the place? Or do we say, no, the rider is the place, and underneath him is, happens to be the horse? So the answer is, the rider is the essence. When you see a rider and the horse, Who's the main thing? Not the horse. The main thing is the rider. And also it says, then the Midrash, when a rider sits on the horse, all of his belts and weapons and everything, they're hanging, sagging on the sides, covering the horse. So the horse is covered with the rider. He's not just on top of the rider, on top of the horse. The rider is also covering the horse with his weapons and his belt and his bags and the food and the, the, the water canteen, whatever. All that is covering over the horse. So the rider is the makom, and the source, the, the horse is by the way. Okay? So that's the idea here of Adonai Ma'on, which is prayer is the Ma'on. But this prayer being Ma'on is explaining who Tila le Moshe Isha Elohim is. Okay? Tila le Moshe Isha Elohim. What is he doing by being Isha Elohim of turning nature to do miracles? That may, nature is dictating this, Rabbeinu says in lesson number 7 and lesson number 9, that prayer can make, na- make miracles. Prayer can change nature and make miracles. That's the power of davening. He says davening, Eretz Yisrael, miracles, they're all, and emunah, they're all one concept. He says that in lesson 7, lesson number 9. So that Tfilah de Moshe is to do that. Tfilah de Moshe, that it's the prayer of this tzaddik, that he worked on himself, He's now the master of Elohim, of the Teva, that he controls that. And from his prayers, he can transform that. So this quality is the quality of Tefillah. Tav Bet Pei Lamed Hei. And the holy name associated with Tefillah is not Elohim, it's Alev Dalet Nun Yud. So Adonai Ma'on is explaining the words Tefillah Le Moshe Yish Elohim. This Tefillah Le Moshe Yish Elohim, we call it Adonai Ma'on, because this is really the place of the world, all of the other prayer that's, that's revealing Hashem's Malchut in the world. So Hashem becomes the Makom of the world when His Malchut is revealed. This being Moshe Rabbeinu's power, Ata Hayita Lanu Bedor Vador. What the Zohar says, the present of Moshe Rabbeinu is in every generation. It Pashtuta the Moshe Bechol Dara Vedara. The presence of Moshe Rabbeinu is in every generation. This Tzaddik called Moshe Rabbeinu, his presence is available in every generation. What that means on Pshat, according to the Kabbalah, like the Arizal says, that every generation has a tzaddik who is totally 100% the incarnate of Moshe Rabbeinu b'chvodo b'atzmo. That's the Pshat in Kabbalah. We want to go a bit higher than that. We want to say like this, this ability of Tefillah de Moshe to be Ish Elohim, to transform nature, and that's Adonai Ma'on, that makes the presence of Aleph Dalet Nun Yud Malchut, Hashem's Malchut, that it's now Ma'on and it's readily, readily visible to everybody that Hashem is the Makom of the world. And not that the world is Hashem's place, like right now, when it's concealed, you see, ah, there's a God somewhere out there, like they say the people, the secular people. Yeah, God is maybe somewhere out there, like, but I don't see Him here. That's wrong. That's not the real truth. The real truth is He's, re- he's here. But we want it to be revealed that they shouldn't say that anymore. That, that, that There's no room to make such a statement. So that attitude which is Moshe Rabbeinu, Atah Hayit Alanu Bedor Vador, you Moshe Rabbeinu, 
giving us the strength to daven like this, to activate tefillah, is with us in every generation. Because you would think, so, no azma, what, the, what the Zohar says, that Moshe Rabbeinu is present every generation. So what does that do for me? Okay, whoopee. Uh, I now have to find this tzaddik and connect myself to him. What will it do for me? It says, if you find the tzaddik and he's, he's in every generation, he's not so far. It's every generation you can find him. Atahaitalanu bedorvador, that with this tzaddik, I have now someone to attach my tefillah to, tefillah le Moshe. My davening is tafel, secondary to Moshe. And now I have the koach to change nature. That's the way a Jew can overcome nature. You hear stories of people who are, who are sick, are in bad situations. And what do they tell them? You have to daven. So the person says, what? I davened already a hundred times already, a thousand times. I don't see any hope. I don't see. So what's missing for the factor of davening? They have to attach their tefillah to Moshe. If it's tefillah to Moshe, then there's Isha Elohim. Then there's mastery over the nature. Then miracles can happen. This is the power of tefillah. Tfila is, I, I daven every day. It's not really davening, it's tafel. You see, davening is, or Tfila de Moshe, or it's tafel, it's secondary, it's bland. It's missing taste and tam. There's no tam. It's missing the taste. So it doesn't go up, it doesn't cause fruit. I need my tfila to be secondary to the tzaddik. Not, not secondary to me, that I'm carrying the horse, I'm schlepping the horse. But now I now attach my davening, the tfila. Le Moshe, Isha Elohim, now I have. And this, even, Bechol Dor Vador. There's no one to say, ah, there were Tzadikim 50 years ago, there were Tzadikim 100 years ago, ah, there were these breast of Tzadikim 10 years ago, and now I, who, who do we have left? It's not like that. Bechol Dor Vador, there's this ability to attach your davening to the Tzadikim, to do miracles. The world says, there's no hope. It's finished and everything. Tfila, Le Moshe, dictates there is hope. There's always hope. You can always overcome the nature and be Isha Elohim, to be above the nature of Ezzat Hashem. Everyone says it's over, it's over. 99%, 99 say it's over. And there's one that's saying it's not over. That one is the tefillah. But now you make the tefillah the Moshe, and yes, it'll over, it won't become no longer one ratio, one to 99. It becomes the 99. And the no, it's, it's over, and the Yehush becomes the one now to 99. See, tefillah alone, it's tafel, it's secondary. But it's tefillah of a tav, it's now le Moshe, then it causes Isha Elohim. This is the super power, supernatural power of Malchut. This is the supernatural power of tefillah. This is the characteristic of the, the song type, of the ten types of song called tefillah. This is what tefillah does. That it does miracles to transform nature, to become above nature. To daven enough. I used to remember that funny story once I heard directly from Rav Michal Dorfman. Rav Michal Dorfman told me that while he was living in Moscow, so his wife, Alea Shalom, started to complain about shoulder pains and it was getting worse and worse and worse. And she couldn't sleep and painkillers wasn't helping. It wasn't going away. So they did x-rays. They went to some university hospital in Moscow. They did the x-rays. After the x-rays, they call Rav Michal to the side. They say, your wife has terminal cancer in her arm. And... It's going to soon have to be amputated and then it's going to spread and there's no, there's no healing for this. So he heard that and he said to the doctors, thank you. And then he said, now I have to really dub it. <laughs> so he started doing major Yitbodidut. He said, Hashem, I believe that only... He told me this. He told me this was his davening. Hashem, everything's in your hands. The doctors are not in charge. All this is a test for me to break to the hands of the doctors of nature or to believe that really, there's really a God running the world. And he dove in like this, dove in like this, and dove in. And she had to go for another checkup, like in another two weeks, or a week, or two weeks, whatever. So they went back to do another checkup, and clearly a miracle. The cancer disappeared on the x-rays. And the doctors there were top, top communists. You can imagine they were Jewish communists, so they were really communists, okay, unfortunately. The Jewish communists were the real, co <laughs> extreme communists, okay? So... The doctors wouldn't accept what happened. And because it was a university hospital, whatever was being done always had students there. So when she went into the initial x-ray, there were students there with the doctors, with the professors. And then the second time, there were also students. So the doctor didn't know what to, to, to tell the students. So Rav Michal heard the doctor telling the students, here you can see how even a, what's it called again? The machine, the... The X-ray machine, yeah, machine can make mistakes. <laughs> okay. 
He didn't want to, the, 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 the professor, the doctor, could not accept there was a miracle. He didn't, he didn't want to accept there was a miracle. Even though he probably saw this can't happen, but he sees in front of his eyes, he sees the x-ray from two weeks ago, and he sees the x-ray now, and it disappeared. What happened? So we have to conclude there was a, there was a little switch, a little switch in the, in the x-ray machine, and it didn't work properly, right? This is tefillah. Tefillah, when it's attached to the tzaddik, gives a person the hope of Isha Elohim. Gives you the hope that, yes, I can be above nature. I don't have to be dictated by the laws of nature. Because if I follow the laws of nature, there's only sadness and depression, and that's not emet. It can't be that this is emet. And also the attitude accepted b'simcha, but I know deep down inside I'm not accepting it b'simcha. It's all fake. It's a bluff. Oh, yeah, everything's great. Hashem's running the world. But it's, it's painful still, right? What I have to reach is Ish Elohim. I'm totally one with our God and there's only God and He's running the world and He can change everything as He wishes. And that's it. Period. There's nothing else. Einot Bilvadom. This is the Koach of Tefillah. This is the representation of the song called Tefillah B'Zat Hashem, which we Zohar have activated with the Tikkun Kali, saying chapter Tzadik, because that's what it goes to say. But this chapter, Kapitol Tzadik, has the power to give you Tefillah de Moshe. The Tefillah attached to the Tzadik in Bigish Elohim B'Zat Hashem. All right. Yes, Shukwach.